Hey friends, welcome back to Minute Rockets. Today we're going to show you how to make these sugar motor igniters that I use on all my sugar motors. Now they're pretty simple to make and they do a great job. So let's get started. So what we're going to start with is some nichrome resistance wire. And this stuff's going to get hot when you put a voltage across it. It's just like the wires in your toaster that glow when you push down your bread in your toaster. It's the same kind of stuff. You can get it on Amazon. It's pretty easy to find. I'm using 36 gauge here and there's some calculations you can do to find out the right size and how long a wire you need. This happens to be about 26 ohms per feet, so if you do the math on that, you can find out how many amps you'll get based on your voltage, but you don't need to do any of that. Just use the length that I'm showing you here and you won't have any problems. So this nichrome wire, as you can see here, putting it up to a battery, when a voltage goes across it, it's going to heat up due to that voltage. So you can see there, it turned bright red and then it vaporized and broke. And the longer the wire, the more heat you'll generate and the slower it'll heat up to a point. You can see here if the wire is too long, it'll heat up a little bit, but it won't get glowing hot and it won't get hot enough to break the wires. We want a sweet spot in the middle where we have enough length to generate the heat we need, but not so long that we're not gonna be able to heat up the wire. And we have a foolproof method that we'll use to get the right length that I'll show you later in the video. So for the base of our igniter, we're going to use some network wire. I really like this Cat5 cable because it comes in twisted pairs, which is perfect for igniters, and it's about the right size and stiffness, so it makes a nice stiff igniter, and the wire is a good size, and it's relatively inexpensive. You can get spools of it, or you can just buy some network cables and have a good amount of it. So we're just going to cut off a piece of it here. That's the length that we want our igniters to be. You can make them as long or as short as you want, depending on how long your motor is. If you have a really long motor, obviously you're going to want a longer igniter, so you can push it all the way up to the front of your motor. If you have a shorter motor, you might want a shorter igniter. So once we have a length of that cut, we're just going to take off the outside insulation to expose the wires inside. And inside this network cable, there's going to be four twisted pairs. So that's going to allow us to make four igniters from this one length of the cable. And they're each going to be a different color. So once we get those twisted pairs taken out of the insulation, we'll grab one and we'll get started making our igniter out of it. So the first thing we're going to do with our twisted pair here is to just untwist about an inch or an inch and a half from the end so that we have two separate wires um, that are going to be next to each other and that's where we're going to make the head of our igniter. So just get those two wires separated and then we're going to start out by stripping one side. Um, it doesn't matter which side you pick, just take one and strip off just about a quarter of an inch or about five millimeters or so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come about an inch, inch and a quarter in on the other wire and you're going to cut it off so that the two wires are offset by about an inch or about 25 millimeters. And then once you have those offset, then you're going to strip the other side. So then you'll have two stripped wires that are about an inch or about 25 millimeters apart. And that's going to be the base of our igniter head. So that's looking real good right there. That's what you want. So once we have our two wires offset and strip, we're going to take a length of our nichrome wire and we're going to wrap it a few times around the shorter end and make really good contact there with the stripped part of the copper wire. And then once we have it wrapped around that, then we're going to wrap it a few times around the insulation of the longer wire, like you can see here, and that'll give us the length we need. So the number of wraps you give it around the insulated portion is going to determine the length of your resistance wire that's going to heat up. And I found for 12 volt systems, around eight to 10 wraps is good. And so I would go with that. Um, it's not super critical how many wraps you have as long as it's in that ballpark, like five to 10. And then once you get it wrapped around the insulated part, you're gonna continue wrapping around the stripped part on the longer wire. And then once you have that, then you can go ahead and cut off the end. And the base of our igniter is complete. So you can see once we have that wire wrapped around, it's contacting the two leads and it has a portion in the middle that's insulated. And that's the part that's gonna heat up. So if we take the other end of our igniter and we put it on a battery, you can see that those are gonna heat up. You're gonna see a little puff of smoke and then it's gonna vaporize the wire. And that's what we want. And it might not look like a whole lot on the video, but that's gonna be plenty of heat to ignite the propellant that we're gonna add to the end of this igniter. And here we can see that again with a few more wraps of the wire and a little bit higher voltage. And you can see we get very similar results. You hit the voltage, we get a nice glowing wire and a puff of smoke. So that's a nice demonstration of how the nichrome wire is gonna initiate our igniter. So next we're gonna solder the lead together. And for this, we're gonna build a little helping hand 
or third hand they call it sometimes in soldering. So I'm just going to take a block of wood, drill a hole in it, stick a dowel in it, and then I'm going to drill a hole in that dowel and put an alligator clip in the hole in the dowel. And all that's going to do is allow me to clip my wires to that alligator clip and it's going to hold them in place while I solder them. And that's going to make it much easier to do the next part. All right, so this part's real easy. First, we're just gonna take our wire and we're gonna clip it into our handy dandy third hand here. Then we'll grab a piece of our nichrome wire and we'll start wrapping it around the stripped off portion here of the shorter wire. And then we're just gonna grab our soldering iron and we're gonna hit it with some solder and just real thin coating of solder on there. And that's gonna be plenty to hold those on. I know my soldering iron is terrible. I didn't have any flux, so still works. You can see we've got a nice strong bond there that's not going to come off. And we'll go ahead and wrap our wraps around our insulated portion and just keep wrapping like we did before around the other conductor. Grab our soldering iron and go ahead and solder the other end. Again with just a real thin coating of solder there, just enough to cover the nichrome wire and the copper conductor. And with that, you can see we have a real nice solder joint on both ends, and we have our nichrome wire there in the middle that's insulated by the insulation of the cable. And if we give that a little tug, it's nice and strong. No worries for that igniter right there. And once we've done that, we can clip off the end, and we have a really nice soldered igniter that's going to be more reliable, and you're pretty much not going to have a failure with that igniter. Once it's soldered, um, it's going to protect everything and hold those wires together indefinitely. Now we're just going to batch out the rest of our igniters from the other three wires that we got from that network cable. And you can see this process goes pretty quickly with the setup we have here, especially with that third hand there helping us. It's not unreasonable to make 20 or 30 igniters in an evening and then you're set for a good long while. So I really like this method. So soldering the igniter is technically optional, but it will extend the life of the igniter and it'll really add reliability to it as well. Now, if I didn't have a soldering iron, I would just skip this part. The only thing you might run into is eventually the propellant that's gonna be on these might have a tendency to corrode that joint between the nichrome and the copper and you might not have good continuity for your igniter. And so over time, you might have a failure in your igniter. I have used unsoldered igniters like a year later and it's probably like 50-50 whether they work or not, if they're not soldered after that long of a time. If you're going to use them right away, then it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But if you're wanting to keep them for a longer time, then definitely recommend soldering. So there we have the base of our four igniters ready to go. And we can move on to putting on the propellant that's going to actually create the fire that's going to light the motor. All right, this last part is really what makes these igniters so simple. So we're just going to take some of the leftover propellant from the motors that we made in my previous videos. And if you haven't seen those yet, I'll link them in the description. There's a video showing how to cast propellant and it has the formula there and everything you need to create this sugar propellant. So we just take that leftover propellant from our motors or if you have these igniters ready when you make some motors, you can just dip the igniters after you make your motors and that works out really well too. In this case, I'm just gonna heat up some propellant that I have left over from those motors that I made before. While we're waiting for our propellant to melt, I'm just gonna tidy up these igniters by wrapping them up and twisting them so they're just a little smaller and easier to handle when we dip them. So what we're gonna do is allow this propellant to melt and then we're gonna dip these igniters in the propellant. And that's pretty much all we're gonna have to do. And you can see these two chunks of propellant have quite a bit of white on them. That's just moisture from the atmosphere. One thing about the sugar propellant is it really traps in moisture and it causes that white sort of blush on the surface. That doesn't really affect the propellant except it makes it harder to light. That's the main thing. And so if you have some older grains that have that white on it, you can scrape it off and it'll usually light okay. If they're really bad, then it can ruin the grain. Also for that reason, I always store my grains with a desiccant and you can get those desiccants on Amazon too. I'll put a link to that in the description. Anytime I have this propellant, whether it be the igniters or the motors, I always put like a silica desiccant or a desiccant of some kind in with the motors just to absorb that moisture so they don't get white like this. But these just being scraps, they weren't stored with that desiccant. 
but because it's just moisture and we're heating this propellant above the boiling point of water all of that moisture is going to be driven off when we melt this propellant so we don't have to worry about it in this case as soon as we melt this that moisture is going to go away and it's going to be as good as new and then once it's melted we just take our igniters one by one and just dip them in the propellant and dipping the igniters is pretty sensitive to how hot the propellant is the temperature and so right around 250 degrees fahrenheit or between 250 and 260 fahrenheit uh, which is right around 120 25 celsius seems to be a good spot for dipping the igniters if it's too cold then it'll be too thick and it won't want to stick to the igniter if it's too hot then it's going to want to run off and you're not going to be able to get a good layer on there so you might have to play with that a little bit i have one of these infrared thermometers that i can keep track of the temperature of the propellant and that works out really well. So I'd recommend one of those if you're going to try something like this. And then the other trick to dipping these igniters is to, whenever you dip them, you can um, move them around in the propellant a little bit. Make sure it completely covers all the exposed wires. That's really important. You don't want to have any exposed wires after you dip them. And then to take them out of the propellant really slowly. The propellant tends to stick to itself. So if you pull it out too quickly, then it'll sort of pull the propellant off of your igniter and you won't get good coverage. So the slower you pull it out, the less issues you'll have with that and the more even coverage you'll have. So we'll just continue dipping the igniters until we have them all dipped. And I actually made eight of them in this run and leave those for at least a couple hours for the sugar to harden back up and they'll be ready to handle. And then, like I said, I always store them with this silica desiccant. So this is just an old plastic jar that I had from the kitchen and so I just put a couple desiccant packets in there and then I'll put my eight igniters in there and put the cap on and we'll be good to go. These igniters will stay in there and they'll stay good. As long as that desiccant stays in there, these will stay good pretty much indefinitely. So here's a demo of a few of the igniters in action. So I hope you enjoyed that demo of how I make my sugar motor igniters and I hope you have a great and a safe day.